podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a- Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on, baby? Nothing, my dad. Walk on. Man, check it, man. Hey, man, we got a uh, we got a nice uh, we got a nice looking guest in here today. She looks good, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? We got we got it going on today. I'm feeling real good, man. I, I feel like a king sitting over in this chair today, yeah. man. Check it, man. Jones Monroe is in the house. What's up, baby? Hello, how are you? Hey, man. What's so, up, King? So you got <laughs> it right. Queen. You got it right. You got it right. Yes. You know what I'm saying? As long, long as you get it right, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Joe Monroe, man, you know, when I started researching you, I was looking for information. I kept, and, and they wouldn't give me nothing else. <laughs> I got the black song, but let's let's get into it. I like to go back and uh, try to figure out, like, who is Jones Monroe? Uh, Jones Monroe is a soulful down south southern girl who mm-hmm. you know is a black gangster Marilyn Monroe at the end of the day like that's that's the best way everybody describes me when they hear my music when they meet me and they and they, they hear my message Dope. but let's talk about Jones Monroe before she was Jones Monroe uh, back in the day back in the day so my name like, is Christina okay. check it man you know so okay. uh, my name is Christina Pogue and I am from East Texas and how was it like growing Bull up in Terrell, Texas? <laughs> Let's stop right Terrell, there. That's people not East call Texas. Terrell, Texas, Save East Texas. Don't play, don't, play don't play about that. Don't play about that. You know I don't play about that. I know, but that's just, you know that's just I not East Texas. Don't play East, about East that. Texas, but you're it's, not it's, East it's, Texas, baby. You live a little bit. Of, you're, you're in the uh, outskirts of Dallas. Outskirts you of are, Dallas. You are basically uh, in the rural area. <laughs> You know, you're not in East Texas. I'm from East Texas. You oh. was tra- so caught up in trying to. I am from the Caddo Lake. I am straight from, from like right outer beside Marshall, outer six outer miles outer. before so you, you grew get up to with the horse. The horse. Not with the horses. No, no, no. It was wild hogs, pigs. <laughs> Did you hand pick the quail? Yeah. Well, you know, we we had to we had to eat what we kill. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So all I'm all I'm saying is you're from you're from. A rural area outside of Dallas. Um, you okay. and Jamie Foxx. Yeah, I, me and Jamie Foxx. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, I can educate you on where you're from. I, I, you know, I know where you're from. You know, but uh, don't, don't do that because we work too hard to uh, get our names established down in East Texas. I mean, we, we, we fish too much to play around with the country. We, we hunt it. We, 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 we kill too many chickens. You know what I'm saying? The one thing we're not gonna do is set up here and act like y'all are in the country when y'all are in the city. <laughs> We can't get K104, no. 979 the beat. We can't that even get so any phone, our phone services out. Everything. And you're going to sit here so and try true. to play me into, well, I'm going to get off my soapbox. <laughs> 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 no, I definitely I definitely know that it is, uh, it, it, it's a, I love Terrell. Mm. When I first came, I met my wife in Terrell. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. That's how this store ended up there for 10 years. I put that store down there because I met my wife down there. Mm. And I was in that area working because I'm I work for I'm an engineer for a communications company. And I met my wife down there. And I felt like this is a good place. And I often go down there and she don't know it, but I go look at where I met her at a lot of times. Oh, I love it. Yeah, love yeah, story. Yeah. Well, I mean, just it's 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 just something that, that you do. Um, not to say it ain't been no ups and downs, it's been almost twenty years, but the good mm. days outweigh the bad days. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's that's the whole game, and I got my children to check it, man. Shout out to Shamari and Malachi. What's up with it? But um, so let's get back to you, Jones. Yes, Monroe. sir. Yes, sir. Um, starting out, you know, uh, being young, being from Turrell, what gave you the inspiration to feel like you could make it out of Turrell? Oh, my grandma. My grandma all day long. My uh, my grandma Fanny. Okay. Fanny Jones. Fanny Jones. Fanny Jones. You you speak so soft. Scoot up to that mic. There you go. There you go. Check, I like check. it. Oh, yeah. I need to hear you. See? Okay. Now, Fanny, Fanny. Oh, yeah, man. Can we that, hear that? Oh, yes. we can hear now you. you sound, sound good. perfectly good. Yeah, see, because when the podcast go, we, we, and I love to explain this part, it, nobody's going to see your face. All they're going to do is hear your voice, and mm. I want it to sound good to our, when you're riding in the car and you hear, mm. man, Joan Monroe is in this I thing. I listen to Apple Podcasts. Come on, podcasts man. Yeah, Google yeah, you sound you. so Talk good. There you go. Got it? Got 
Got it. I got it. Oh, really? It sounds dope, man. You should get. You should be on a radio station, right? She got that romantic yeah, voice. Yeah. So she you got, need to do the late night. You know the late voice. night part. You know, <laughs> you know, like like Rudy I, V. I have like a few you're records your, coming out later this year for the late <laughs> night. You know? Rudy V. used to do the late night. You don't know that he be hello. How you doing? <laughs> you <know? laughs> So yeah, just John Monroe, just tell yeah. us a little bit about coming from Terrell. What inspired you? How did you? How did you figure out? Figure it out? How did you know that? Because I, I, looking at looking at your researching you and looking at your bio, you we find out you went to school in a song opera, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know that that that's dope. But what what gave you that inspiration? You say your grandma. Let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. So um, my grandmother raised me. Okay. In East Texas and Terrell, and we um, she like really instilled in me just the arts and music and knowledge and being a strong female and being a strong black woman. Wow. And so that was something that was really important to her because she, you know, she grew up um, overcoming a lot, just, you know, being a black woman in America. And so she helped me through that and she started me off with piano, started me off in classical piano at six. Wow. And then I turned around and started singing uh, classical voice. Wow. Um, and, you know, she was just like always encouraging me to pursue my dreams and, and inspire others. Like we would wake up at, at four in the morning and go to the Catholic Church down in Terrell. And, hey. mm -hmm. and we would like do service acts and go and visit, you know, the friends of her graves, uh, or the graves of her friends. And um, we would go and just do things like that. And so I, people always tell me I have an old soul. Yeah, I just told um, you that before you started. <laughs> for sure, I get that every time yeah. someone talks to me, but it, it really is true. Um, and basically just that process of growing up in East Texas and being able to, to really travel the world and um, build, you know, things that I have built. You know, I am the CEO of a successful artist development company. Wait, that's dope. Yeah, based here in Dallas, Texas. Wow. Yeah. So, so you, you're seeing a lot of the talent that comes through Dallas. The, For sure. And, and, and they're basically, and, and God, is he prospering you over there? Oh, yeah, you know Already. what? Mm -hmm. You know, you're king, I'm queen. Well, you know, at the end of the day, the word of God says that, beloved, I wish above all things that I may mm. prosper and be in good health even as our soul prosper. Mm. So, you know, that's a beautiful thing when you say, I have this successful business. That's saying God prospers me. For sure. And that's dope. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> my, my, my grandma and my mom, they always told me, you know, I stuck with it. Proverbs eighteen sixteen. They your, get your it. gifts, your gifts will make room, room for, for you. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There you so go. I appreciate that, man. But growing up in Terrell, I, I know that your mom, your grandmother um, instilled all of these things in you. But how difficult was it growing up in Terrell and trying to learn these traits? Because although she's teaching you these things, it wasn't just she just teaching you get it like that. Mm -hmm. It's over time before it, you know you actually got it. So. What was what was the difficulties growing up there compared to you know other places? Oh, first off, I was a stubborn little girl. So when I first you know went down there, I like I was like I kicked I kicked my uncle, and I was like I ain't gonna be here. And so, <laughs> and so like I always you know um, I'm I'm very very strong willed, and so just the challenge of that. But my my grandma's strength, I think, like rose up every single time that I, I wanted to you know do my own thing and I, I felt her presence and she would tell me stories wow beautiful and so the stories I felt like really really stuck with me mm. and that helped me like overcome like the situations and, and different things like that because give me an example of a story yeah so like a big thing that like I, I felt like I struggled with growing up in Terrell was still racism mm -hmm. hey and so because people don't realize you have the South side of the tracks and yes. the north side of the tracks, and you know they feel like okay, the blacks are on the south side, the the whites are on the north side. People don't know that, and even you know, oh, it I, gets deep. It, it's been years it now that deep. I um, when I had moved to Terrell and I found all of that out. Yeah, but you, well, you would think that that was back in the days. Luckily, you ended up on the south side. And it yeah. also is lucky, you know, if you'd have went down a little further and turned on Roosevelt, you'd have married a pastor. Yeah, because that's where they all stay at. You know what I'm saying? They they down there at that end road where you turn, and they all was lined up when I used to be down there. I said, boy, this is the street right here where a lot of tithing going on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I knew that it was a lot of Reverend Daniels used to have a place right in front of uh is he still alive? I don't know. I Rem Daniel. No, she says yeah. Well, he yeah. Me and him would have a lot of conversations about God when he mm -hmm. was around. Um, you know, you know how I am, mm -hmm. and uh, I would tell him different things, and we would have different 
you know, I love to, I, I mean, we debated a, lot, a little about different things that I felt, you know, um, we, we needed to talk about when I would see him, you know. Um, and it was just a delight to be able to talk with him and spend time with him. And not only him, the one that lived, I, could, I know where all of them live. Because God gave me a gift to deal with the leadership. People, you got to understand, he tells you who to deal with and talk to. Most of the time, they come right here and sit there. We have Sunday uh, little segments with pastors 20, all the time. Mm. Because I'm a, I'm a different type of dude, man. Mm. You know, I feel like you can worship God where you stand. So mm. it, it brings a lot of different obstacles to people who say they go to church when I feel like you are the church. Mm. I feel like you should be dealing with God at all times because life is too short and death and all that it's unexpected and so we need to be dealing with that all the time mm. and so it's not a thing to where it's a traditional thing it's a spiritual thing i don't know why i took y'all there but let's mm -hmm. get to so it go, let's, let's go back let's <laughs> let's go back to the story of uh, you said the biggest thing biggest obstacle you had to face was racism how did your grandmother what was the story she told you to overcome this exactly she always told me that when all else fails look beautiful but not just on the outside, on the inside too. Mm. And so no matter what situation that, I, that I've that i dealt with, whether it was something direct, like being called the N-word, or if it was, you know, not being able to hang out with, with certain people anymore because, you know, their parents didn't really approve of all of that or I felt uncomfortable over there. Um, she was like, you know what? You are worth it. You are valuable. You are, God created you. You are, you're, you're, you're queen. Do you mm. realize my uh, my mom always says we come from good stock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah. What, what's dope. that mean? That's like, dope. That's we, dope. we come from good stock, and so like she really always just encouraged the confidence in me. Mm -hmm. She encouraged um, education. She encouraged things that would give me the foundation of, of being um, confident without breaking my will, wow. you know, and letting me be artsy and letting me explore mm. um, the arts and the, and the creative side of things. And she just really encouraged my dreams and, mm. and everything else. And because of that, like every single time I had to deal with the situation like that, I would know my self-worth. So I would kind of let it roll off, right? Mm. And when I was younger, it that didn't happen all the time, right? <laughs> but now- It'd be a fight. Right? <laughs> but but it's, a, it's, a, it's a process. It is a process. Evolution is real. And mm. the crazy thing about racism, people don't understand. These are some people who are, who are like this to you were kids growing up with you and they didn't portray that because kids don't see no color. Mm -mm. They're like, oh, we just friends. But as you get older and certain things get instilled in them, then all of a sudden, that start to change. You can't hang with this person anymore, much less date that person. It's a problem. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, I mean, you know, when you really look at what's going on in those inner cities, you know, I can remember when Jamie Foxx came home one time and he was like, you know, he felt disrespected because when he was coming to town, they had put a small picture of him on, on the newspaper mm -hmm. and they put a big picture of a tractor and a white guy sitting on it. And after that, after he made a statement or two, the next time he came, they put billboards out by the highways and everything else yeah, to try to that. make up for it. Mm -hmm. So we know that these issues are there. These issues are still there to this day. Um, these issues are things that we face in America and, and other countries, as we well know, because people who have stepped up and said things about it. So I understand where you come from when you say that you face challenges of racism because I'm from a smaller, even smaller town. And yeah, it was even, it, it, it was there. It was livid. I mean, and, and the older you go back, the more aggressive it becomes. Now, they hide it a little better nowadays, but at the end of the day, we seen what happened with George Floyd. We seen what happened with Sandra Bland and all the things that we see that caused us to have these different Trayvon Martins and all the different things that we seen happen. Um, we know that these things are happening and they're alive and we, we're, we're in fear of our children a lot of times when they go out and they drive. And, and my son called me one night and his car quit when he was in Canton. And I told him, what are you doing out there at three, 3 in the morning? And you, you got a flat tire. And, and immediately I jump up out of the bed and start trying to get that way because I have a fear in my heart that if somebody see him in out there area. at that time of night in that area as a black man by himself, that something bad could happen. And so this is the stuff that we live with that others can't even identify with. So it, it's it's different. It puts us in a in a in a in a bubble. 
You see what I'm saying? So I get it. I get where you're coming from when you say what you say and how you deliver the message. For sure. Definitely love the way that uh, I listen to your song. You know, I love I love how it's right in your face. I got a question. So, um, how old were you when you started singing when you were in Terrell? Because you said you came to Terrell, so I know that you weren't born in Terrell. No, I was born in Dallas. You're Straight born in Dallas, up and Dallas. You, yeah, and then sure. you went out there to live with her. Yeah. Okay. So why did you move how from old Dallas? Were you? And how old were you? I was, I think, four when I went to live with my That's dope. Brother. That's dope. You from, and you went straight on to Terrell. I four. went on. I and went why straight. did you have to go out there and not stay in Dallas? Correct. No, I wanted to, um, my mom is was modeling at the time. Oh, mm. yeah. Mama getting it in. <laughs> Pre-Instagram no, model. She was I, I, straight up I got up the queen, down. mama. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, yeah, yeah, I talked to her. Yeah, <laughs> she dope. <laughs> <laughs> but she, but so at the end of the day, she, she was modeling, trying uh, to take care of business as a sure. career. And, and traveling and, and, and doing all of that. And my grandmother at the time, it was like, I love her. And, I, you know, shout out to my brothers. But, you know, I, was, I felt like I was the, fam- the yeah. favorite grandchild. I was like that, too. So I get it. <laughs> are, I get you, it. are you were you the only girl? Uh, yes, ma'am. That's the reason why. Yeah. That's the reason mm-hmm. why. So when you went out there, okay, so you were four. When did you discover your love for singing? Around like six, so nope, nope, nope. yeah. So it was really th- my my grandmother put me in. She always had this quote: "I give my left arm if I could play the piano." Please. So she <laughs> she she put me in piano, and uh, I started learning that. But I realized I really liked to sing because mm-hmm. music was always an escape. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I got to be who I was, yeah, and really. Did. You know, because my grandmother was real structured, and that's so live. I got to party that's out. That's live. That's live. So, and that's one know. sport. If you call it a sport, that's one sport you don't have to play with anybody else. You can do it by yourself. For sure. Easy. So, do you um like like when you when you got older? Let, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. I want to go to that part where, okay, it's time for John Joe, John Monroe to go. No, I have one question in between that. You do? Yes. What is so it? you started singing at age of six, but I know you didn't start singing opera right away. No, I didn't. So what age did you figure out, well, my my vocal can go to that stage because to sing opera, you have to get up there. Yes, for sure. So, so when did you figure that out? 12, I 12. started training. That's dope. Good question. So yeah. why opera rather than regular, you know? R&B. Because I love, I love, love, I'm obsessed with culture. Yeah. And when my grandmother always, you know, uh, encouraged me like to explore the world and like mm-hmm, really mm-hmm. just be that independent, you know, can I cuss on here? Yeah. I'm, okay. That I'm don't go, that's don't go too raw. You know what I'm saying? Don't look good. Don't become you. Okay. Because you're beautiful. And, and at the end of the day, if that's what it takes to get your point across, you do what you do. But at okay. the end of the day, it's on you. So I was going to say that that. Go ahead. Go ahead. It. It, was just the, it was just the S <laughs> word. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Said, Boy, I'm, I'm telling you, that annoying the hitter in the face. But it was just the S word. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. You want to say shit, right? Okay, we're going to fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, tell us what's going on. So, 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 um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys. All right, so, um, fast and fast and fast and forward. Mm-hmm. Around 12, I started singing opera and um, exploring culture, exploring yeah, the world. Yeah. I love languages. I still study languages, and so I got to do that in in the songs. And you know, I I always have loved all types of music. Yeah, mm-hmm. just country music, rap music, really? opera. Yeah, and you know, because of that, and they realized that I love music like that. They um they put me in opera and had me try some sessions out, and I, I loved all my instructors throughout the years. And yeah. so I think from uh, twelve, thirteen, and up until like. Uh, like 1920, I sang opera. Really? See, I had a friend who, um, back home in Jamaica, she sang opera. And I didn't realize that when you sang opera, you have to know all these different languages. Because she, when she sang, she sang in all these different languages. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what you're saying, but you sound <laughs> so good. And her voice was so strong. And she was, at a time when I first heard her, she was probably about 10. But she could be in this room and make the wall shake. Mm. That's how strong her voice was. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at this little girl. She's short. I'm looking at her like, where did that voice come from? <laughs> Nobody else in her family has that voice like that. Where's she at now? And, well, she doesn't sing anymore. Because yes, yeah. her parent, because she was living in New York, and that's where she would have gotten the most exposure. But um, New York is not always great to raise kids. You know, it depends on the type of area you're in and stuff like that. So they had moved back to Jamaica. Mm. 
Mm. And so, you know, where the career was concerned, I don't think that just went out the window. But um, her voice, oh, my God. And then she knew languages at 10. That's dope. And that just amazed me. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think. That's dope. Hey, man, you know, like she said, your gift will make room for you, you know. Mm. And, and the part that kind of confuses me is that talent not taking her all away. If she was who, well, you know I, I, what I love about today's society. I mean, the the social media platforms are so in your face. They tell you if you're good enough a lot of times. But social media back then wasn't a thing. How, lo- how, how far are we talking about? Okay, that? she was 10. I was probably about... 17 so that was some so now mm, i'm okay. she's probably in her 30s right now yeah yeah so what's her name ramona shout out to ramona yeah she be getting it in but you, that, yeah holla yeah. at your boy it's a unique hustle <laughs> let's go okay yeah. so what i want to do is hey t- ramona <laughs> hey ramona <laughs> uh, uh give us um give us a little bit of opera i want to hear all right let me see <clears throat> yeah all right, all right. You know what? I like, I like it. I like that. I like <laughs> it. I ain't never heard nothing like that in this place on wow. no microphone. Okay, we we'll do that one more time. I want to know if that. Would, and, and let me hear it. Come on. Did you hear it, uh, Shamar? You need to hear this. This is something new, girl. Go ahead. Well, give me another one then. Yeah, yeah. Come on, just a little bit. It's all more. opera in different languages. It's not any in English. Oh, you have like Latin arias. Yeah, um, there's yeah. There's some, I sang some classical pieces. Like, um, I sang, I used to sing this song, Sinner, Please Don't Let This Harvest Pass. Let me hear what you got there. Let me see if I can remember that one. <laughs> Listen, I think the, the sinner may let the harvest pass. Let me oh, see. Really? Hold on. I'm sorry. Oh, sinner, please don't let this harvest pass. Sinner, please don't let this harvest pay. Oh. That's good. See, that's I, good. I, 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 I no, no, no. With that, that don't, because you're so used you, you're to so used yeah, to hearing all that. That doesn't oh, sound like you know, an opera. It's, it's a Negro spiritual. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that, 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 yeah, 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 but they let but it, they like, let it pay. You know. Yeah, that's yeah. more yeah. like, yeah. You know. Dang! So you just running around here black singing opera? I've seen a couple yeah, yeah, of y'all. No, I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> it ain't many. Is it a lot of blacks that sing no. African American? It's not many. No, not many. But that's dope, wow. though. For sure. Because you step you step on a okay, different so stage than not, others. Because you so you traveled everywhere to sing yeah. opera. Yeah, it's classical music, opera. So and then, when you oh, sorry, to, oh sorry, sorry, ahead. no. When you went all these different places and you didn't see many people who look like you. Um. Did Terrell come back to the back of your, your mind in Definitely. those situations? Definitely. All the time. All the time. And really, up until this past year, with the like, I feel like the George Floyd movement did something different to every black person. Yeah, I read, I read that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it did something different to every... I, I think it, it's something that is just like anything else. Some people took it different ways. They had to sit down and look at it because of COVID. And so they were stuck in the house and it was forced to look at this. And they didn't have, uh, you know, people wasn't having a lot of room for tolerance at this time. But the way it was done was so outlandish. The way he just just put it right in our face. This is what this is what I represent. And and it it woke a lot of people up, woke a lot of countries up. But some people was just doing it for the for the hype, too. Everybody wasn't just doing it from a sincere place. Bandwagonists. I, I, I say that because on, on jobs and different places, you've seen them start to, you know, oh, we care and all that. But, you know, but really people can don't. say a lot of things. Jesus says these people honor me with their lips and speak of me like with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. And I'm paraphrasing. But at the end of the day, um, I've never seen the change in the structure of our uh, look at look at look at look, when you look at different ways that people are structured in the corporate American world. Where has that changed? If everybody's standing up for it like that, you see what I'm saying? It, it, when it comes to the money, I think a lot of time the change stops. Yeah, for sure. Our yeah. people are suffering, mm. yeah. and with our people suffering like they are in certain situations, and and not only that, being manipulated, and there's the job placement is not it hadn't changed. So I think, and I don't blame it on 
every other race. It's up to us to pull ourselves up as well. Um, we we have a lot of people, a lot of a lot of when it comes to rap music, entrepreneurs. When it comes down to producing whatever music, we're we're talented people, but we need to step up and 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 do what's right when it comes down. I don't applaud people in these big higher up positions because a lot of unity need to be pulled together on, on their level. But a lot of times they're so caught up with their monetarily gain that they x out their own people. Mm-hmm. So I just I don't I don't play with it. I, I see it, and it's it's very distasteful to me. For sure, for sure. You see what I'm saying? We got to do more to unify as a people. Yeah, I, I feel like, and that's why I wrote my record because I feel like. We have overcome the fact that we're not slaves anymore, obviously. I feel like we've overcome the fact that we're not slaves dope, anymore. Dope. And I feel like we have overcome, like, you know, being second class, too. Mm -hmm. But we haven't overcome realizing that we're amazing, that we are kings and queens, yeah. that we can do anything. Yeah. And because of that confidence within ourselves, it, it can finish breaking the Jim Crow and the, yeah. at the extra divide and the extra layers that they gave us. Yeah, I and, agree with that. And so once, once we get over that hump, yeah. and once we have some more music to inspire that, because music inspires culture, Yeah, right? And uh -huh. fashion, video, and we're uh -huh. slowly doing it. Yeah. Matter of fact, I, I, my favorite thing that happened lately, and I felt it yesterday, and I said, Mama, you feel that? She said, yeah, that was weird. I said, yeah, and we're like, that was good. And we're like, yeah, that was weird. We were at a restaurant, I won't say where, but we were at a restaurant. Um, it was like a market. Okay. And we were the only black people there. Okay, as usual. As I usual. do that a lot. <laughs> well, and, and um, we were about to get some food and we're waiting patiently in line. And then there were some people that weren't black right behind us. And um, I remember. And um, they, they were over talking us to the per person checking us out. And they were like ignoring the fact that we were in line and not giving mm -hmm. it and just really privileged and entitled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't know if they actually realized they were doing that. Yeah. Because the, the beauty of the whole situation was amazing because of the awareness that's being brought. So for me, the George Floyd movement, that's what it brought was awareness and it awoke me as, as Jones Monroe. Mm -hmm. And so with, with the, the people checking us out, normally they would have catered to them. They would have, like, but that didn't happen. They stopped. They said, you guys need to get in line. Exactly. And they got in line, and I think they realized at that point that they were out of line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No no pun intended. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. But then we, I, we go up to the line, and then they take it one step further. They said, ma'am, ma'am. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, is there anything else we can get you? And I definitely. said, no, but thank you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was the first time I've in my life I've ever experienced that. Wow, you know th there are certain things that we, you know, I get it because I know that that it happens to us a lot. But it's also things that you remember we was in California and that brother pulled us out of line, mm -hmm. and he said, "Hey, mm -hmm. I want y'all to come up here." And he was pulling everybody, but some of the, but it, most of the people that look <laughs> like us. And uh, he say, brother, we're not gonna let y'all stand in line. I'm not playing. This guy told me this. He'll he a brother. In in California, it, we was at uh, uh, at a car rental. We was place. at Hertz. Mm -hmm. And he said the line was from here out out the door. I won't pass my truck out there. And uh, he say, brother, we we hey. But we before he pulled you out of line, one thing I, I don't remember if I told you, he was over there sitting down. And he was like. Trying to call people. Trying to call. And I'm looking at him like, I know he, because it's not something of normal. Like yeah. Calling us out of line to yeah. come jump everybody in line. Because he to wanted come. to bless And I'm us. like, mm. you know, ignoring it. Then he got up out of his seat oh. and came over there. And, and said, hey, y'all come on. Because well, yes. he wanted us to understand that he wanted us to be first. Mm -hmm. And that was mm -hmm. the first time that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that, that's so lit. He followed me on Instagram, mm -hmm. Steve. <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, I just, I. Never had that happen before. I just thought about that when you were saying what you were mm. saying. That's dope. Like the whole line, it was long, and I'm telling you, it was a lot of people. But he made sure to acknowledge his people. That's what's happening. And you know, how many times does this happen on the other side? We know it happens. But for us to feel like I want to help my people, that that was dope. That was literally the dopest moment on that vacation. I don't mm -hmm. know what the hell we was doing. <laughs> 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 but but that was dope. Um, so I mean. But that's one thing. But let's let, let me take it a little further. Our people need counseling too. 
we need to, it starts in the home with the family. It's having these discussions openly, telling our children, our children, children's children what happened and understanding what it caused in our, in our people. Because there's a lot of stuff that we have, to, we have to acknowledge. Yeah, we did pass slavery, but there are some things that are underlying and where our families have been split that it, it trickles down. We, we give up easy. We, we, we think it's okay not to be together when, when you have children. Um, we, we feel like it's okay to uh, just pretty much uh, go our separate ways, and it's not. We got to start formulating our families back together and trying to figure out ways to educate our families to where, you know, hey, it's okay to be together and fight for what you, what you believe in. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And finish what you start. Mm. Quit, quit stopping. Mm. You know what I mean? What you, it's easy to quit. That's the easiest thing, I'm telling you. But it's hard as hell to keep working at something. Mm. I promise you. And not only that, just to know, like what you're saying, to know that you're worth more. Because you have a lot of people out there who will say, I'm a king or I'm a queen. I'm worth something. But really deep down inside, they don't believe themselves. They just say it all the time because it shows in their actions when, yes, they might adorn themselves nice and they dress nice and they look beautiful and everything. And people are looking at them like, ooh, they're confident. They're just, But... If you watch them closely and see how they might be jealous over X, Y, Z, if you're confident, you, you're you not going to be jealous over anybody else. Mm-mm. So just stuff like that show little signs that you're really not believing yourself. Well, I think, I, think that, I think the process goes deeper because I think that you have to know why you're a king and a queen. Mm. See, because the word of God tells you you're a king and a queen. Mm-hmm. The word of God says you're a chosen generation. Mm-hmm. It says ye are saints. Mm-hmm. I say this a lot on these episodes. Mm-hmm. It says you, you are a holy nation. It says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you got to know that, how to tap into that, if mm-hmm. you believe that. Because I'm a, I'm a Christian, so I believe that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Mm-hmm. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Mm-hmm. So when things become new, now I can be this person that... God says I am instead of who people made me out to be my entire life. Yeah. So I get to start over again. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> so but everything starts in the mind. Yeah, but 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 that but that starts in the spirit, that, and that king and queen. In the spirit. So mm-hmm. it overtakes and overlaps. That's why the Bible tells you to strengthen, be ye strengthened in your inner man. Mm-hmm. You gotta feed your inner man, your inner person, your mm-hmm. inner self. You gotta have you gotta feed it the right food spiritually. If you don't then you're going to end up down yourself like you were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. not understanding your king and queen. But once I know that God says I'm a God, then I'm good. Mm. I don't care what nobody else say at that point. Mm. Am then, I right? You're just so right. And then you can, <laughs> you're, you're so right. Can I get an amen? Hey, <laughs> hey, you know, I, this, this, people be like, is this a Christian station? But really, I just like acknowledging who we are and pretty much telling the truth about what it says we are. Most people don't know that. They sit up and they're always oh, wrote by the white man and all that, but they never even read it. Mm-hmm. They don't even know. It's it never even, even said just- nothing about a white man either. This is some men. People have put these things in there. You talk about different languages. Uh, the, the language changing has happened they from way back. Mm-hmm. You know, the Grecians pushed Greek at a time period on everybody to where they would force that language after they was coming out of Hebrew. You, you know what I'm saying? Certain languages pretty much were pushed on people and they were made to speak these languages culturalist, culturalistically. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we know that. So at the end of the day, that's a good thing, you know, that we know our history. And then we go back and find out the canosity of the scriptures. How did the scrolls come to be? And then not only that, if you want to check other things like Egyptian literature, all that, do that too. I found that when you start doing stuff like that, you end up coming right on to God because you start finding out the truth. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you got to know your history. But you, but most people, most African Americans were raised in church. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you go to church as a child, you go there and go to sleep. <laughs> I'm not lying. A lot of oh, us did fall asleep. To go to sleep. You huh? f- fell asleep because it was boring to you. You didn't understand certain did things. Did you, you fall have, asleep? I remember snoring a few. See, a few <laughs> see. Services. But what I'm saying is that. You do this because you were forced to your parents. So this is, it became such a tradition that this is what you did. So mm-hmm. some people, even as you leave your parents' house, you, you continued in this tradition. Mm-hmm. And you go and listen to this man say what he has to say. You hear it for that moment. You felt good. But when you left, the next day they ask you what he preached. Most people don't remember it. You didn't implement it in your life because you did not go research it for yourself. You did not make it your own. It was just muscle memory. Exactly. So... 
as you get older and you go through trials and tribulations, that's the reason why God put us through trials and tribulations for us to search for him. And I have been that person in the past where, you know, you read the Bible and you get certain parts, but a lot of times you're like, I don't, I don't get that part. I don't understand. So a lot of people tend to get discouraged and put it down because I don't understand what it's saying. You know what I mean? So that's why they always go and look for somebody else to tell them. But as I got older and as we study, I realized that the reason why you don't understand because you have too much clutter in your mind and in your heart. You're not letting go of fleshly stuff mm. to be able to store spiritual for sure, things. For sure. But nobody don't really tell you that mm -mm. And, or break it down to you. That's why I meditate. <laughs> that's dope. That, that's, I, that's I love meditation. Meditation. meditation is real. I have to you know, meditate. I meditate every day, and then I try to meditate all day. Mm. Yeah, you know, live mm -hmm. in that space. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, I like it. That. Helps. It, it helps because it it, we we live in such a fast paced generation. Yeah, you know, and you know, it's how do we get to the next? How do we get mm. to the next? We Instead so of busy. focusing mm. on ourselves, that when we meditate, we can clear out like that clutter that. you're talking like about, that. right? Exactly. That, 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 that's lit. Mm -hmm. So, with your new album, with your um, with Black. Are we gonna start seeing a lot more like that? For sure. Um, I have two more records that are like that. Well, all my music is, you know, Southern inspired and has that basis, but I have I have the love records. Okay. I have my perception of love. I hey. have um, I have the soul records of, of inspiration, of like where, you know, the thought provoking conscious records of yeah. like where I come from that just make you feel good. Mm -hmm. um, I have the pretty records. You know, I have the, the, the Forget You records. We'll oh, say yeah. that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Nah, you, you want to say something else, don't you? know what? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, the, the, the absolute thing you have to, have, to, have to realize, man, is that it's, it's something that, okay, I'll put it like, something inspired you. Who, who, any, any artist that's known, did, did any inspire you? Oh, for sure, for like, sure. Like, who was your who was your biggest inspiration when it comes down to people who, 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 who we hear on the radio, or who we see on the TV, or who we see on YouTube? It may who, not even be somebody you see. I'm, I'm asking. That, I'm trying to get there. Yeah. So, uh, Aretha Franklin is hey. a huge inspiration for me. Okay. Like just how so basically anybody you can feel that I feel like taps into that meditation meditative uh, meditation space when they're singing like Aretha. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can tell that her vo it's her voice, but it's not her voice. Like, it's coming through her, you know? Um, so any artists that like that, and even rap artists, you know, like, you just have certain real conscious people, like Tupac, and, yeah. and um, I love love me some Tupac. Man, mm. you know, I'm, I'm a Patti LaBelle fan. Oh, okay. Don't, don't play. You, okay. heard, you hear how she get down. Okay. Ain't nothing like it. <laughs> I love some Patti, too. There's nothing like it. Like, nothing. But you know what? In a sing-off... They would both be amazing. <laughs> you, know, you know who else I like? Um, uh, you better know it. You, buy, I mean, you, you, you better it say it. I, you I like think, some Ray Charles? Because Ray Charles I love, is my... I love Ray Charles. Um, you know who I like? I love her voice. Um, Tony Braxton. I mm. like Tony Braxton. I love how she low she sits. You know, she so sits, she sits low. Her voice is de very different. different. Mm -hmm. Very different. Tony Braxton is I love dope. Jacob Banks. I love... Jacob Banks. Okay. I love uh, Jacob Banks. Shout wow. out to Jacob Banks. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever want to work with somebody? Jacob sure. Banks. Jacob <laughs> Banks. <laughs> I, I had a feeling she was going to say <laughs> The way really she know. said, I love so, Jacob I Banks. mean, give me some r and B. I I mean, I want to hear some R&B, the, uh, the song that you pick when you say, I'm saying I love the way that's that's more like my style. Uh, for R&B records? Yeah. I love... Um, the the sexy records. Let me hear it. That's you what you want to hear? You want to hear my yeah, record? Yeah, I want to hear what you. Oh, this is your record. Oh, you want to hear my record? No, I, no, oh, I wanted okay. to hear. No, I, if that's what you want to do, but I want to hear something from a, with an R and B feel. Uh, you want me to sing it right now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me see. Which song? Is it something that I'm gonna know? It's not something you're gonna know. It's a sneak preview. Okay, let's okay. go. Let's okay. go. Okay. I'll take it. Hold on, I'm getting this in my. This from this from this from the album. Do you need us to find a beat? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's go. She got her own beat going. All right. So the song's called Two by Four. Here we go. And they say when you love somebody spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, they're the one. 
Kiss me right there Pull back my hair Tell all my shirt Tell me you owe me It really ain't fair How you don't care I know you still Really do want me Oh, you got me right there Tonight And I don't want nobody else but you Here by my side Cause you're checking more boxes is the most Too hard to fall Too hard to fall Alright I don't hey. want her to stop. I'm here listening hey. to every word. I'm hanging on every word. Man. I'm like, please don't stop. I'm like, say, this man, that, that, that that's it good. right there, man. I, I, mean, I, I felt good. it. You know I what felt saying? it in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was going. There. I didn't even look at her to be honest with you. <laughs> I didn't even look at her. You know what I'm saying? She, she's a cute girl. I want to. I want to take nothing away from the music. Don't try to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's like the radio to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. but it was. I loved it. I loved it. I'm Appreciate like, okay, definitely got to get that song. Download it whenever, <laughs> so I can use it on certain times. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll play yeah, it at yeah. certain times. Just let it ride, huh? <laughs> Already. Um, let, let, let me get them top uh, three artists of all time. Top best top three artists of all no, time. You heard it. No, what is your your top, top three, three artists of all, of all time? time. Dead Any or alive. genre. Which you you kind of expressed yeah. it, but still, let, let's go. That with might it. not be her top three. What yeah. she said before. Dead or alive. Any Tupac. genre. Tupac. Okay, we know Tupac. Okay. Okay. Outcast. Outcast. Okay. And I well. love Outcast. Who is your favorite person in Andre, Outcast? Andre 3000. It's Andre. Of course, he's mine I could have told you that. It just, the eclecticness <laughs> of Mine is all. big boy. It could have well, been him. I'm a thug him. with mine. And then a, it, it, it's a Aretha I'm rock, Franklin. I'm rock, I'm rock. Okay. So I have some like more like soul, okay. but, like woke up this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Forgot you weren't here. Somebody kissed me. You come back up this time of year. People selling Christmas trees ain't even Halloween. Reminds me there's nothing artificial about you and me. Said my soul cries for you. Don't know when you gon' come back to me. Let me tell you what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that's John oh. Monroe, nigga. You niggas done messed up Where while she in the building. From? Yeah, man. Yeah, I feel real good about it. That was the one that one hit me right yeah. there. Yeah, that, that's what I'm woke up now. Yes, sir, man. Oh. We got this. Is it a star is born? Don't even trip. So, where did it's you get those good. vocals from? Like, who in your family sings like you? Well, not like you, but... Nobody. <laughs> Hell, I can answer that. <laughs> but where Ain't did nobody you get sing like that. Yeah. My mama sings. You'd have heard she about them already. My, and my grandma sings. Oh, you'd have heard okay. about them already. And my already. uncle plays the guitar like Jimmy yeah, Hendrix. Yeah, it don't oh, matter. Okay. They ain't you, though. Okay. <laughs> you the one. <laughs> So you I got a manager. So I need to ask mama to sing. If the nigga ain't doing right, you know I'm here. Mama dying. She you got a manager. <laughs> you got a manager or not? I'm serious now. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, let him let him don't act right. You got my number. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I put it on. Yeah, yeah. I put your little care package together too. <laughs> yeah, these niggas better act right out here now. I'm. In, I got a microphone. These niggas is in trouble. Oh. Yeah, I got a microphone now. You have a voice. Yeah, oh, I got I a microphone that. and you got Damn. a voice. You're, that's I all it takes, that. man. So Man. why the switch from op opera to this? Why did why you not? hold on? I'm just asking. Why didn't you go back to singing opera? Because I know I read w when you stopped opera, it, you came to take care of your grandma because mm -hmm. she yeah. was, you know, her health was mm -hmm. diminishing. So, but after that, why didn't you go back into the opera? I started teaching voice. Yeah. And, and she opened up school. Up. Open up a, <laughs> and I really, I, I believe so much that music is connected to the universe. It is. Like, and there's no separation to it. And I didn't feel like I had a message to give out. And so right now that, that I was real passionate about and strong about to mm -hmm. where it would pull me away to put 100% into it, you know, wow. and, and give everything the amount of care. Because I've always done music. It's, right, you know, this is right, what I do. Right, right. But the biggest thing that that caught me one day, I was sitting there and 
all these songs literally I wrote in about 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. They, I literally just wrote them straight. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's the biggest thing that, that you know, like, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They came. <laughs> hey, you know. No, but it, it's just because. Okay, we've never. I've always wanted to go to an opera to 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 watch. Well, I don't know about that. He, he, I'm nervous about that. I already know he's probably never. I want to go to where you were singing a while ago. <laughs> I, I, go that, that I go there, you know, but but, that, but the white part of her is coming out. A granddad <laughs> white, so a granddad white. My you know what I'm saying? I so she want to go. I'm gonna go to with do, her because it's my wife. Because the thing is that I'm gonna be in the back eating popcorn. You know, okay, you know how you you watch movies? No, and that's where we see it on, right? You watch the movies, yes, and you see it. And uh-huh. you see when some people are watching it, everybody gets so emotional. Some people yeah. fall out crying uh-huh. just watching uh-huh. opera. And, and I'll be watching the Soul Train. Because I know, there's, so a lot of em- I know yeah. there's a lot of emotion that Don pours Cornelius. out into it. They as sing much from as, the toes. Right. As much as I don't understand one word they're saying, but you can feel everything within, you know, just the power in their voices. Mm. So it's like I would love to go and just experience that. I just never mentioned it to him because I know he would never want to. No, I'll go with you. But I'm not going to be just like up in Vegas. Let me tell you something. I'll go to sleep. He will go and he'd be like, no, (laughs) this this would be him. This is what you take me here for? Yeah, yeah. If it ain't right. He would meddle. I got to feel it. He would meddle and but. I got to feel he it. He might end up crying, though. I would love to see that, to see if he got into it that much. I would Hell love no, to see it. man. I'm a thug. You know, I ain't going to cry. I'm definitely not going to cry. You know, it's. I'm probably going to laugh. I'm going to tell you right now. It's it's, it's not going to come out like you think. I mean, because you dope. Don't get it twisted. But the, the songs that hit me was what you did there at the end. I ain't going to lie to you. I can't lie on my ear. I told you that already. I can't lie on what I hear and what I feel. I don't do that. I feel that. I got to be real, else I'm not going to. And life is too short. I don't want to uh, go out here trying to figure it out with you when I'm, girl, I ain't going to tell my age. But I ain't got time to be playing with right now. I can't be playing with time. See, time is something you don't play with right now. Now, if you want to go to opera, we'll go over there. We're not going to stay all night. <laughs> but, but y'all, because they be going long, don't they? I, I went to one recently uh-huh. during COVID. How long does it last? It was only about an hour and a half. I can do that. that I can do that. Not that long. Do they have they have it here in Dallas, right? Yes, at the Winspear Opera House. Oh, okay. okay. Well, you need to go down it's there. A, y'all should go. It would be a beautful night. You know, yeah. get dressed you up. Get dressed up. up. Get dressed up. Mm-hmm. You feel like a queen that That's you are. You, you know what I mean? That's all you want to do. You get to be the king for the I night. Oh, I'm a king every night. Oh, but you know what I mean? But feel. Yeah, without no up. king. Would do it. That don't but, make you no king. No, no. Hell but, no. But, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah, the best yes. seats to get in an opera house? In the back, because I'm going to be tripping. Get away from the front. Have you ever performed and you can hear some people in the crowd like just chit chat and talking and no no I normally normally people are so quiet quiet and crying yeah well, I'm not gonna cry and he's not gonna be quiet and I'm damn sure not gonna be quiet see you know what you <laughs> don't know. even take I, yeah take me down they kicked me out of church when I was about four <laughs> <laughs> that's why I ain't really get I ain't really get that yeah they didn't let me get it really I'm telling you the truth. My brother, I might have I can, to call you and um, yes, we can go together. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, we ma'am. can no, go I'll together. Go, I'll go, but I'm going to sit in the back. <laughs> we can sit in the front. Y'all sit in the front. We're going to sit in the front. I'm going to be in the back like, boy, they sure is up there long. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going. I'm, I am just want to be back there. I never did. I never went to one. I never went to one. I, so we'll go. Been okay. on I want you list. to text me when the next one. Okay, for sure. The next good one. Yeah. Okay, Is it sure. on a Saturday? Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. <laughs> This is like, what time? <laughs> what time did you go to the last one? I went to, it was a 7 p.m. You that's can't dope. be late. That's cool. Because it starts right, right, right on time. And then you, you, you want to, you don't want to get caught like making noise because you can hear pin drops. Mm-hmm. So if you're walking in, you can hear the heels. Right. Just, you ever heard so it is exactly. I'm, I, haven't heard the, I haven't heard the phone, but I hear the. It yeah. is exactly what I see on TV then because that's exactly what sure. it is. Like everybody have to be totally silent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get back to the black. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even, we trying to get this lady in. Man, BC, shout out to BC, man. Shout out to, to BC. Let's go, Black. What's, what, so what's your relationship with you, BC? BC is amazing. He's managing me right okay, now. Okay, okay. Shout out to BC. Stay on it, boy. I'm coming through. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's, he's a great mentor, too. Okay. Um, so How long has he been managing you? 
Um, not long. I met him actually um, through another client because I work and represent a lot of different clients. Mm-hmm. So I actually took him a rap artist. Mm-hmm. And it was funny. He goes, do you do music? And at the time, I think I still wasn't even doing music. I was like, mm. mm-mm. Yeah. And I was like, I, I just work with music. I work with talent. You know, I go to like, I do things. I go to the Grammys, mm-hmm. like, and work with artists. So yeah. he heard your voice at that time when he asked you that question. So, he must no. Have heard you. And this is how I knew it was brewing inside of me. After he just kept asking me, I, I sent him a picture of me that doesn't really look like me, but it's me, and sent him like this record that I did. And I sent it over, and I really was trying you to did play that him. picture? <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? That's not the picture. <laughs> it's a black and white picture. Well, explain, okay. explain this picture. What is the album? What's is the it album? Adam and Eve? It is. And what uh, it's the, about? My favorite line from my last record is, um, uh, "We came from King. I came from Kings. Rose up from Queens. Been through so much. Talk. Of, you know, I came from Eve. Oh. So like, the apple is just the signature of the woman and." how strong we are and, and my arms up in the air, obviously, but it's it, all of the photos, all the arts, very symbolic for the projects and all the songs. So, so you do, um, you got a vocal strong face. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm a queen. <laughs> yeah. Her yeah, expressions, I, oh, you weren't, her expressions when she's singing yeah. and everything. And I'm sitting down here I'm and I was watching your, ex- oh. <laughs> you have expressions out of this world. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, you're very she, she expressive performs. in your face when you are singing. I mean, everything. She performs. I appreciate yeah, that. On a whole nother but, level. So you said you had a appreciate rap artist that. that you introduced to him so that you Who also that developed. Who was rap artist? You also Shout did, out to Vex. Vex? Vex. Vex. He, he, he Vex. Vex is dope. He okay. is on um, well, if you took him over there, all you platforms. Be. I've been working Vex. with him since he was... I don't know, about four years. Really dope. Yeah. I like it. I'm going to look him up. Shout out to Vex, man. We're going to be looking so at So you develop um, rappers, I, too? I develop all genres. I all work gen- with oh, okay. screamo to pop to R&B to rap to soul. I have a team of uh, uh, industry creatives that we wow. work with. And, wow. we and do how long full, you been in business doing this? I have been doing this for 12 years. Wow. I've had my, my personal business for five. Hey. And what's the biggest artist you've ever produced? Um, I don't know. I've done things from like Aka Pop with the Pentatonics, oh, which is like pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, like from from like from start to finish, I mean, I have artists that have signed. I'm trying to think of of my favorites are popping in my head from country artists. I work with a guy named Shane Stevens in country. Mm. I love to interview him. Oh. Where's he at? <laughs> <laughs> That's who I want. Country artists. We Do haven't you had a country. country you know, I have sang almost all drama. Shout out to Kirsta, Kirsta Rodden. She's one of my yeah. um, black country artists, and she's really making some waves in country music right now. Wow. wow. Yeah, she uh, just got back from Nashville, so I'll, I'll tell her to shout out to you. The wow. closest thing to a country artist that we've ever had on here T-Dash. is T-Dash. T-Dash mm-hmm. on country on here. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. she's real country. She's no, no, not. No, 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 no. T-Dash oh, she's country. She, real country, even in her life, yeah. not just singing it. Just country. Oh, okay. Like, like country. You know, I like that, man. You know, you know what? Terry Cherry could learn from this woman. Mm-hmm. I, I have, I'm going to have to show it to you. I like, I hey, like that. <laughs> yeah, that's dope, man. I, I, love, I love the way that she comes across because it makes you, and it gives you, a, I, I'm pretty sure it gives them more confidence when they say they learn from you. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It has to. Like when you go, you go like, yeah, I know how to do things, but if I get approved from somebody who's been doing it long and they show me things that makes me feel like I'm doing better and I sound better, I see the improvement, it got to give you a sense of confidence. And not only that, but to hear her voice and know that her voice is not, she's not just in one genre of music, but she can do this and this and this, not just trying to teach me because you have some people who are coaches and can't sing. Yeah. Mm. But you can do both. Mm. You're not fit to teach me and can't sing. <laughs> You're not fit to cook for me and you can and, and you and you ain't fat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to be fat. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff to go with a lot of I'm things. I'm not fat and I cook for you. Well, you, you like know. oxtails. That's, that's his my favorite wife. dish. She's that's, from his, that's his favorite. She's okay. I've been I can't I've been eating oxtails for like three weeks. I don't know why, but I can't stop. I ain't been have on you oxtail gotten, kick. But you, okay, but have you gotten American oxtails or Jamaican oxtails? I oxtail? cook them. She cooked. Okay, how do you cook it? Southern, we're not, we're not, East Texas. Yeah, 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 nah, nah, you that's keep, not. I'm not going to go there with you, but mm-hmm. Southern rural area, Dallas, uh, Oscars. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Terrell wasn't the same back then. What, hey. We got a Bucky now, Bucky's now and everything else. Man, oh, we had a shopping strip. We used to have Hutchinson's. You can you get your groceries the, on credit. Listen, man, mm -hmm. that's it. That 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 is country, but not as country as us. We are. Uh, we only had Terra Big now. Yeah, we only had one store growing up and one post office. I'm a country boy. I don't know when was the last time you been down there? I just went down there. Oh, when? Okay. Like a few weeks ago. Okay. I was down there yesterday. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's like, I beat you to it. And I was down there today too. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I frequent Terra. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> So what's up with you and Jamie Foxx, man? Let's check it, man. Jamie Foxx, I'm tapping in with you because, man, we Have got... Have you ever met him? Look, man, let me finish my little tap in. We got Joan Monroe <laughs> on the show. Her grandmother taught her how to play the piano or to send her to learn how to play the piano. Your grandmother showed you. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, rock with them. They should do something together. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, you know? yeah, your voice is dope and he he can sing a little bit. And you sing a little bit. When a you, little yeah. bit. <laughs> He's like, no. Yeah, okay. Yeah, shout out Boss Talk. I changed my mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> No, I like I like You're not gonna do my Jamie. No, nah, she loves Jamie. I love Jamie, man. Okay. Like like Terrell, Texas, stop playing, man. Jamie, man, come on, man. That's the only thing I talk about. Like when I'm <laughs> going out of town, I'll be like, Yeah, I got a store in Terrell where Jamie Foxx from. That, that, that's that's, that's the way we do it. People people only if you say, Oh, Terrell, Texas they don't know it, but you say, "Oh, where Jamie Fox is from?" Oh, yeah, okay. he the man. But okay. then, he, then even Dallas, if you say Jamie Fox, you, and, and people are like, "Where Dallas?" He 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 gonna he gonna always say Terrell. Mm -hmm. But people, I mean, he's even recognized for Dallas as well. He's just that big. Like, um, have you ever met him? I have met him briefly when he came down. I was there that day. He ain't see you. He didn't even get to talk to you. And listen, man, they named the street after him. That's what you talking about. So my my aunt, uh, my great aunt, was the mayor of Turl. Oh, so, oh, so you got a, you got exclusive. Yeah, so you know. Did you get to talk to him? Just briefly. What did you say to him? Hi. That's it? <laughs> you got on the stage and you flop. You know, that's what I call it. Like, you, you, like even when we met Steve Madden or uh, whoever we meet. It's like I get on the stage. It's like I got to be prepared because you never know what's going to happen. And I want to make sure I captivate in this moment. Yeah, just like performing. Yeah, so that's the way I look at it. So if I meet somebody, it's already prepared in me like I'm ready. I'm ready. Like this is like the, this is the moment I've been waiting for. You know? <laughs> is, that, is that something that's hard? Like that's different? That's what's up. Yeah, because yeah. I wouldn't have just said hi. I might have said hi and went into my opera. I don't know, you know if I'm you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going to go into my opera. Like, but yeah. that was a very, hi, but that was a very out, busy Jamie. day, though. That yeah. was an extreme But was it that day? day? Yes. That was the same. We was down there that yeah, day. Yeah, we were down we, there, too. And my We've brother. Shout out to my brother, because my brother, he picked up on something. You know, we had guys that was, we been going down there. You know, Steve used to come a lot. Mm -hmm. And it was certain people like, man, I don't like Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx, man, I used to shoot. I used to play ball with him. I used to play the drum. Well, I don't like that nigga. He don't even come home. He don't do nothing. And, and this is just hood talk, right? But then when Jamie Foxx came, Hey, Jamie, 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 that's Jamie right there. You remember me? And I'm like, buddy, nigga, show on Jamie. <laughs> but you know they love Jamie. But you know that it's like so they, they don't want him to go. Like they love him so much that they, they, they like, hate to see him go. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> perform at the perform at oh, the Oh, I got theater. more stories, but I'm not gonna put them out there on certain people. But I heard some things. And but when Jamie came to town, he shut all that down. You know, that got shut down quick. He was gonna escalate, the escalate, right? He come out the sunroof, them niggas went crazy. Now, I, crazy. I, I said, wow, I loved it, man. Cause, so you was there that day. How old was you? I don't even remember. You was young. I was you wasn't that young. Yeah, because she was. How long ago was that? They named Bradshaw, which that was Jamie, the name of the yeah. street to Jamie, Jamie Foxx Fox Street. Right. And then they start fixing on the house. I hadn't been by there in a while. It's still there. But it's still there? It's, and, and, it's and, still and, yellow. Okay. That's it's the still thing. yellow? Yeah, it's still it's yellow. So, yeah. and, and, and it's like somebody cuts the yard over there, yeah. you know? So I'm like, man. I think somebody actually lives in there. Yeah, but I'm like, no, uh -uh, no, it's uh -uh, just vacant. Uh -uh. Huh? It's uh -uh. like a well-preserved vacant. How come I see somebody go in there like they clean like it they up? I in think they move the car. Yeah, it's so cl the windows are always like like clear. Okay. Like last time I drove through, I was just like, wow, that's a clean window. <laughs> 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 Jamie is dope though. I, I love the way that he took his family up there. Sure. He, he he pulled his family. He I think he lost his sister mm -hmm. uh, here recently. 
Um, the, you know, but Jamie is is is, is who we are. Mm. He's our people. For sure. And he and, and he is from Turtle. And he keeps it real. I got a and question. And his kids are real. Mm -hmm. And he's doing well with his children. I love the relationship mm -hmm. that we can see in what he does. I, I, I really do. And and a lot of fathers can learn from that. But I never be one. I be wondering where the hell is it the mama's at. I never see the mothers. I'll be like, it's, it's because they're not in the line. Like, they probably don't want to be seen. Don't want to be seen. You know what I mean? So They're tired it, of it. Yeah. He probably I like, I don't want to. Because yeah. some people don't want to be in the limelight like that. But then there's people like me. What's up? Yeah, come see me. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, but my question about the Jamie Foxx way. Because mm -hmm. when you go down there, I know they gave that street his name. Yeah, they did. But doesn't it still have Bradshaw Street it on there does. as well too? Okay. It's, like, so, it's red. But, yeah, and Jamie Foxx. That's, that's, that's what I'm like. Stand black people. Because they I'm gave y'all a street. <laughs> okay, but but if they gave you a street. You, why do you have two well, names? Why do you on? still have the right. other Why well, don't you take the, well, that name off and put his what? on? Because your because mama was the mayor. Ask her. No, uh, mama. Your auntie. <laughs> So I'm, okay, so, right. so let's compare. Yeah, uh, don't ask us. I need to know. do my research because I'm going to search other places in Dallas. You can that, start with the George that, Bush that Turnpike. Yeah. No, no, that a name changed. I want to see, did they actually take the Bush, old eh? one off and put a new one on? Yeah. That's true. Or is it only Terrell that did that? Well, I'm not going to read too far in it. We, we, they're making progress. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is a big step for them. And so they was able to change the street down there to a brother's name, and I'm gonna be happy about that. And if, Jamie, if you come home more, they may give you the damn 34, but you don't come home like that no more. <laughs> you want 34, we give you 34 next time. Highway 34. Highway 34, that's you now. We go, we go, we go, I go out there and put the sign up. Yeah, oh, yeah, no. we, we'll name <laughs> it out there. cracking <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jamie Foxx, man. But so you being from Turl and you made it out, to me you made it out because a lot of people never do what you've done, you know. It's so great and your voice is spectacular, right? Mm, appreciate that. Love it, man. So how can when is the album dropping when we can get more than just black? I am dropping Please tell us. I am dropping when? anticipation of next fall, the entire album, but I'm gonna be releasing singles like every two that's or three the, months. That, that's really two what you have months. to so do. So when is yeah. the next single coming out? It is coming out in two months, but it's a surprise on the date. Cause just like I dropped Black on Juneteenth, like everything has like a special date tied mm -hmm. to it. Okay. So how has June, how has Black been going since you released it in Juneteenth? The coolest thing, it's been received so well. Like I, um, my mom had a, she had a joke. She, she said, if it can pass the hood, it can pass anywhere. <laughs> and I said, what? And she goes, we're going to the hood. And I said, where are we going? And we literally, we rolled up, um, shout out with all my brothers, we rolled up okay. to Keyston Polk. Okay. Keyston Polk, That's shout out hood. Keyston Polk. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Connections, they still over to that I'm going to get them boys a shout out, you know what I'm talking about? You know, oh yeah. And all the DJs showed me love, all of the, all of my, you know, my, my, my friends showed me love. Everybody received the record real well. Everybody's been receiving it well. It's been trending real nicely on you okay, know, all the platforms, on uh, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, uh, let's go. YouTube. Uh, we dropped the, the music video in a few weeks, which hey. is so dope. Who shot it? it? Yeah, who yeah, shot who the music video? Uh, Ralph Canono. Ralph, Ralph Canono. I've never heard that name yes. before. Oh. He is an amazing videographer. Amazing videographer. And I can imagine how unique your video will Well, be. we don't know yet. See, don't do that. No, -uh, Yeah, I uh -uh. feel like that would be a spark. No, a little no, bit of I a spark. Yeah. Well, because we of, ain't never seen her out there like that. Because of the person no, that I'm no. learning about I'm be right now. I'm going to be checking you it out. You seem like that type that will just no. go. It, I love Quentin Tarantino. I love just oh. like film directors. I yeah, love yeah, like artistic yeah, things. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as much as time as I spent putting the record, yeah. I do spend um, putting into the visuals. How long did it take you to do this video from start to finish idea to production like two weeks that's it two weeks yeah. for my idea that's crazy. because i i meditate mm -hmm. on everything and then like i because mm -hmm. I, I feel like everything really for everything is built out already mm -hmm. i can just be honest which i will be checking it out come on and check it out yeah, has it produced to and, exactly what you thought about it being do you for think sure. it do okay. you think you nailed it i feel like Cause I, I had it. michelle on here and, and it was a different type song but it was by leaving her man and i say hell i believe you 
Because her visuals were You see so what I'm saying? Alone. Yeah. Yeah, she left the house with her bag and she was fighting to get out. Yeah. And I he believed could describe her. everything. He, he told her the yeah, color of the suitcase. Yeah, she had on a pink outfit, everything. dragging the suitcase, stuffing it in the car, leaving that cat. Yeah, don't hit oh, me. Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got to be real. Like, it got to be, uh, you got to put it's it real. all. It's real. It shows black leave excellence. Leave it all on the stage. Listen, right? Um, yes. And yeah. when is it I coming can't wait out? to see it. We drop it in a few weeks. What date? Let me see. I'm gonna have to get back with you guys. Yeah, but be, you know what? Go to my social media. You can find it. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, tell okay, us where we, well, yeah, Tell us how we can find you on your social media since you said that. For sure, you can check me out online on um, any platform at Love mm. Jones Monroe. That sounds good. At you Love, married? I am not married. You don't have a man. I do not have a man. Check it, man. She needs a man. You know, Love Monroe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y- y'all intimidated. I heard about you intimidated niggas, so though. I know y'all intimidated. Now, have you ever had one to get intimidated on you? Like they won't come up to you. You be at the, you be sitting there like, why won't nobody talk to me? You know, I've had that before. Yeah, yeah. Where you but was at? People tell me sometimes that I seem unappro- yeah, uh, unapproachable. unapproachable, but no, I'm just no. These niggas are scared. Oh. This is the first time ever I'm going to bring this up, okay? Uh-oh, uh-oh. okay. This is the first time uh-oh, ever I'm going to bring it up. Uh-oh. And this is the only part of what he says that I do agree with. I don't agree with anything else he says, okay? You're talking about Kevin <laughs> Samuels. Let's go shout out Kevin Samuels. You know, don't you know exactly what I was going to say. No, because Kevin Samuels will say a lot of African American women do not smile enough. Mm. And that is usually what makes them seem unapproachable. Mm. Because even like, I remember in the past, I could be walking somewhere and a guy walk past me and say, you can smile or smile. And sometimes I do smile, but some people will turn around and curse that guy out or, Mm. you know, whatever. But smile more. Mm. That will also help to be, you know, for you to be more approachable Mm. if you want to be approached. Mm. That's well, great. you know, mm-hmm. you Appreciate can smile, that. but if you if if they scared, they just scared. You can smile all day long. Look, you smiling now, and he ain't gonna walk up. He he got to get it together. Do you got a job? Are you a high value man? You know what I'm talking about? What you know, what is it to you? Have you ever heard of him, Kevin Samuels? I haven't, but I'm gonna go Ooh, check him out. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over there. Don't do it. He watches him. and I, lo- I watch a lot of people. Now, don't just say it like him. It's, it's a lot of people I watch on the There's internet. There's a lot of controversy about him. You have a lot of females calling in, mainly females, <laughs> who call in to talk to him to prove him wrong about oh. women. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's one of those. I'm still going to check it and out they now don't just to win. see what yes. I think they don't about win. it. Win. <laughs> and they're educated, too, and they have value, they think. But His thing really is, not. are you a high value woman? Or are you no, a high value man? No, a lot, them, you, lot yeah, of not high value. They're thing. kind of low value. Oh wow! Yeah, it's a lot of low value women out there. It's what he's oh, saying. Wow. Well, we just got to work on it. Oh, yeah. Come on, <laughs> kings and queens, step <laughs> up, rise up. That, it, that's just for me. That's his <laughs> op- opinion, man. Like most of the time, people are so sensitive these, these days to what's happening with our social media waves. Um, we've always had opinions. Now you can just see them a lot more than what you used to could. Mm-hmm. You know, but for I sure. really think, uh, and as I was saying earlier, um, your progress report on Instagram, YouTube, and all that is real. I'm being real. Like people tell you basically you're good or you're not good enough mm. from that perspective. And it's their opinion. It's their opinion, but actually uh, those opinions equate to dollars. Mm. It didn't used to, but it does now. That's where you you can do, your whole concert is right there in the midst of everybody at all times. So whether it be TikTok, whether it be Facebook, whether it be Instagram, wherever it is, you should be performing. It should be something. You should be talking to the people that you're connecting with. I think that's great when you connect with your people, your supporters. Mm. And basically, as you do that, you will grow your brand. And also, when you perform, that's another whole uh, section of your brand. So you got to do everything now. For but sure. the thing about society now is good opinions or good um, comments and bad ones still equate to dollars because the more they go at it, is the more mm. views and the more, you know That's what right, I mean? the more interaction. Interaction. Have sure. you ever heard this stuff or are you, we just tripping over here? No, 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 for sure. This is what my, part of my company specializes there in. There you go. Yeah, we specialize in brand development, social yeah, media. exactly. Creative yeah. direction, like all of the PR. Like yeah. I go on. Yeah, that mm. PR. Yeah, so so you you be in these biz, you be in these meetings. I'm in every single meeting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah mastermind concept. I literally just came over here from a meeting. Dope. Russian from. Dope. That's <laughs> it. That's it. I've been in sessions this morning since, since eight or nine this That's morning. Dope. I, I've been How in. much sleep do you get a day? Uh, a few hours. 
Um, that's not an exaggeration. Wow. Yeah, a few hours to at least six, you know, on a good night, six to seven. I do all nighters too. That's normal. It's normal for a creative, you know. Real, real, real hustle. hustle. You call hustle, it creative. Hustle. I call it hustle. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> you know, hustle. like you're just trying to get to it. You know what I mean? For sure. And 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 nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? We we you're young. You got to use your time wisely. That's what I figure. You know, yeah. I'm trying to you know trying be, to push it. Be on the penthouse and mm. be on the yacht. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Have the island. Wow. Any kids? I do not have any kids. No, high value. I've been, high value. I have been married yeah. to my career for, and for a while. I love it. Yeah, high value. Do you want? I do want some high kids. Family. Yeah, well, you better hurry up. The t- time is ticking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I think my mama gonna get me if yeah. I don't have, you know, yeah. at least two well, or three. I can imagine yeah. she's you in your ears, well, like, yeah. come on now. No, we'll, we'll see a baby out. She'll be like, isn't she cute? Yeah. <laughs> Does she, do ticking. your mom try to set you up? All the time. <laughs> All yeah, the time. Maybe Lane. Listen, I just yeah, say it. Be nigga lame. <laughs> <laughs> they be lame, but it's cool. You know what? Shout out to all my kings and queens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you could talk to the 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 young, I, I, I have was to say gonna that, ask that question. the younger you. If you could mm-hmm. talk to that younger you, say the the, the fourteen, fifteen. No, go back to twelve. No, uh, uh, when four, she just started no, doing no, the no, opera. No. Uh-uh, I don't want to just start that. I want to start at 14 or 15. Okay, what well, would mean in the middle 13? Okay, okay, 13. 13. We'll what would you say to the 13-year-old you in, in order to help them strive toward perfection? Mm. I would uh, re-encourage her that she was beautiful. Okay. That she That's is dope. a queen. Mm-hmm. That, and explain the queenness, though, and okay. that she can do anything. Wow, great. Um, uh, that's that's it right there. Um, I read something. I want to go into something. I read something to say that you went through depression at one time. Mm-hmm. How did you um, overcome it? Overcome it, and how long were you in depression for? In that depression, yeah. Um, for at least like I feel like I was really struggling for like two years. And what caused it? I um, went through like a hard situation career wise and then it was at the same time of my grandmother passing. Wow. It was just everything at once, just like life just like smacked me in the face and um, I, I just wound up really struggling through that time like and just some wow. other personal matters like one day I am going to write a book about it. Why not? I mean, you should. Uh, I, it's as I, you should. Yeah, it's some. It's some really like I don't even want to go there all the way mentally right now because mm-hmm. I think I'll even cry. No, maybe a little bit. That. You know we what I mean? Cries already. We oh yeah, we've well, had people <laughs> who want to go mess your makeup up, but we're gonna <laughs> keep it moving. But you know, so like, um, I I went through that, and the biggest thing that like helped me through it was music. Now I know a lot of people say that, but it really was something to hold on to. Like every significant moment in my life, there's a song married to it. And like any time that I needed to feel comforted or peace, I would just listen to the song. And so when it came time to like go, when I went through it and started doing music, then I wound up realizing that life was connected to songs. Mm. And then that's when I feel like all my music and my records really are impacting people like I, uh, the song that you really like I played while I was in the hood and I look around and I'll tell you like it was the strongest toughest men mm-hmm. they started crying well mm-hmm. you notice I didn't cry no <laughs> I want to tell that's you that's gonna something. be one of my goals <clears throat> so the songs helped I'm too, I'm, you I'm through macho. it but can you know how some people always um when they're going through depressive states or going through trouble whether they go start smoking weed or drinking or whatever but at the end of the day when you sober up the problems are still there <laughs> So even with your music, you say you go listen to this, you feel a little bit better, but then you move on from that. You mm-hmm. stop listening to it, that it comes back. No, the meditation then was the, the last key okay. of centering myself and regrounding who I was okay. and, and realizing that those moments didn't define me. Mm-hmm. That, that that happened to me. And then I my, my change in perspective on all the moments, they it changed because I started realizing that the beauty in that moment. There was so the dichotomy of life, right? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, wow, I wouldn't be this strong at all without this. And I wouldn't be this courageous and be able to stand up in this meeting and represent this artist and deal with these people and go through this situation if I had not gone through that situation. Exactly. That I totally believe mm-hmm. that 100%. I always mm-hmm. say, as long as he's known it, everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. So when we go through trials and tribulations, you don't always know that it's preparing you for something down in the future because yeah. you can't see that till later on down the line. 
we've laughed at it and be like, oh, that's why we went through X, Y, Z, because that helps us prepare for what we're going through right now. You know what I mean? So everything in our life that we go through is connected. Just know that no matter how big of a tribulation you're going through, you know that there's something really big waiting on you later on down the line. You have yeah. to turn all that negative into a positive because sure. just like we, I was saying earlier, everything starts in the mind. So it's how you perceive something. You can say something that so-called could be disrespectful, but I can turn it in a way in my mind where I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, you let it roll off because it's how you perceive something. For sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, look like y'all had it going on there for a second. <laughs> I felt like y'all was connecting. It looked like you guys were moving on without me. <laughs> Just like we're going to do at the opera. I'm going to be in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all gonna be in the front. No, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna let you guys have it, but I'm gonna be there for you. You know, I, but you know, I mean, I, I could, I could go on and on about your depression, you know, because I'm, I'm good with that, you know. Far as, you know, you, people go through things for a reason, like mm. you just said. But you know, it's mostly to help other people out of that situation once you make it through it. Mm. That's the most important thing about going through something, because now you have the ability to tap into what someone else who's suffering may be going through and maybe even save a life. Mm -hmm. You see where I'm coming from? For sure. And, and that person that wasn't str not strong as you got may tap you into that person and be like, you know what, I went through something. And next thing you know, they're able to come through because you're pulling them out the fire. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yes. I ain't gonna go no more because I go hard. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can keep going. I go all night long. Yeah, but that's that's why I got kicked out of the church. That's why. I, uh, yeah, that's that's why. You know, because I go hard. Like the preacher, he was. It's competition up in that thing. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show, John Monroe. Uh, thank you guys. Hey, uh, I, I, so I was much. gonna say, you know, when you do come out with the next uh, a song. Um, Bring come in here. I'm gonna show you some things. We going yeah. We can we can celebrate the movement. We ain't gotta oh, yeah. you know because singles. I like what you're doing because it's not you you bringing out different portions of the the album and and it's not done in a way to where people gotta anticipate it is what she's doing. So what better way to display it than to come on Boss Talk 101? Mm. And and yeah, we might even have some models to stand up behind you with a t-shirt on. You know what I'm talking about? That's and they good. just stand there. Proud. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's black. We should have had him in here today. We <laughs> slipping hard, but we here. Hey, man, thank you for coming on the show. We thank love you. So you. Much. We wish you I much you success. Guys. And I promise you, um, yeah, I'm gonna be calling. I, I'm gonna get your number, and I'm gonna be worried when you're trying to figure out what's up. What can we do to help the brand? What What do you need from us? That's how we do it. That's why God keep that. on blessing us, mm -hmm. and we appreciate you. We love you. We expect to see. You go all the way to the top, baby. Okay. Jamie Foxx, look out. She's going to be standing next door to you. Holler at your boy. I'll see you, Nick Hustle. And we out. <laughs>